I can use division and associative property to test for factors and observe patterns. What is the width of each array? What is the length of each array? Write the multiplication sentence for each. And then write the factors of eight. Now, if you remember factors, factors are the numbers that go into eight. So what times what equals eight? List all the factors. Go ahead and pause and do that now. Okay. List the factors of each number. Right. 174 times 2 on your boards. Solve the multiplication sentence using the standard algorithm. Algorithm. What are four factors of 348? You know right away. So solve using the standard algorithm. That would look like this. And then what are the four factors you know right away? I think I can use process of elimination here, and I know just based on this question that my answer is going to be 348. So I know that four factors would be 1 and 348 and 2 and what? So it would be the other factor that goes with 2. So those are four factors that I know right away because I, I know that one is always a factor, one and the number itself. They're, those are always two factors. So I'll go ahead and solve, see if you get 348. Okay, one and 348, two and 174 were the four factors that you should have written down. Okay, we're gonna talk about prime and composite. Number prime is a number that only has one in itself as a factor. Composite means it has more than one factor. So if I list the factors of seven, I would have one, seven, two, nope, three, nope, four, nope, five, nope, six, no, and then we're back to seven. So we know that we've listed all the factors of seven. One and seven are the only numbers that go into seven, so that is a Prime, prime number, <clears throat> let's look at 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, 5, nope, okay, and then now we're hitting 6 again. So, 12 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12 has 6 factors. It is a composite. So, go ahead and pause and do the factors for the next three numbers. And then continue when you're ready. Okay, Sasha says that every number in the 20s is a composite number because 2 is even. Well, here's something right here. Uh, 2 is even, but 2 is a prime number. Um, Amanda says there are two prime numbers in the 20s. Who is correct and how do you know? So I've went, I've gone ahead and made the chart down below for you to look at the factors of each number. The question is, that um, what you're trying to figure out is that Sasha says every number is composite. Amanda says that there are two prime numbers. So go ahead and pause, list all the factors for these numbers, and 
see if you end up with two prime numbers or all composite numbers. <coughs> Find the unknown factor, 7 times blank equals 28. So when you don't know the factor, you could do the opposite, which would be 28 divided by 7, couldn't you? So go ahead and solve it and see what you get. Okay, question answer time. 28 equals 7 times blank. How did you find the unknown factor? We kind of talked about it in the previous slide. You could divide. Um, is 10 a factor of 28? How do you know if it is? How can I find out if 3 is a factor of 54? <coughs> what if I get a remainder? How can we determine if 2 is a factor of 54? Use division to find out if 3 is a factor of 78, if 4 is a factor of 94, and if 3 is a factor of 87. Now, here's two rules we can talk about. If 2 goes into a number, it's going to end in a, the number will end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. 2 goes into all those numbers. We know that 10 goes into all numbers that end in 0. We know that 5 goes into all numbers that end in 5 and 0. Now 3, 3 is an interesting rule. Because when you have 3, you can take the two numbers, like, so I have 54, so I could take the two digits in my number, 5 plus 4, 5 plus 4 equals 9. Does 3 go into 9 evenly? Yes. 3 goes into 9, so that means 3 will also go into 54 without a remainder. So, how can we find out if 3 is a factor of 4? You can divide it, or you can do what I said. Add them together. That works with 3 digit 2, and that works with the number 9. So, 3 and 9 have the same divisibility rules. You add the digits together in the number, if 3 goes into it, that answer, the sum of those numbers, then you won't have a remainder. Like if I have the number 132, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. Does 3 go to 6? Yes, it does. So 3 goes into 132 evenly. So that's how we know that 3 is a factor of 132. So go ahead and pause. <coughs> go through these questions and answer them. Is it necessary to figure out if 5 is a factor of 54? How do you know? Count by fives. What's the pattern? 5, 10, 15, 20. What do all What do all multiples of 5 end with? What do they end with? They end with a 5 or a 0. What does 54 end with? A 4. Is 5 a factor of 54? No, it is not. We divided to determine if 3 was a factor of 54. But for 2 and 5, we don't need to divide. Why or why not? Count by 2s. What's the pattern? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All numbers that are divisible by 2 are even numbers. And we did talk about three. Okay, they, I don't think that they wanted me to show you that rule yet, but I still showed it to you. And I hope you use it. Because it will save you a lot of time. Working with factors. 
How can we know if 6 is a factor of 54? Earlier we saw that 2 and 3 are both factors of 54. Talk to your partner. Is this number sentence true? 54 equals 6 times 9. Is this sentence true? So pause, talk to your partners about it, and proceed when you're ready. Okay, let's write it vertically so it is very easy to see how the factor 6 is related to 2 times 3. So we have our 6 and 2 times 3 times 9. Notice how we move the parentheses so that 3 associates with 9 rather than 2. 3 times 9 is 3 times 9. Okay, find the product of 2 and 27. Is it true that 2 times 27 equals 54? Go ahead, use standard algorithm and solve it. 2 times 27. We use the associative property to show that both 2 and 3 are factors of 54. Now, so far we've done the distributive property where we break down a number, we distribute it to help us solve the problem. This time we're using the associative property. In the associative property, you multiply different numbers together. So you have parentheses in the associative property and you move them. I always think about when you associate with other people or you talk with other people, you may be talking to one person or associating with them and then you decide to go talk to someone else. You know, if you have three friends and you go and talk to one friend who's over by themselves, you're associating with that one person. But then you go over and you, you're going to go ahead and associate with the two people and leave the one. Do you still have the same amount of people? Yeah, you do. So you end up with the same answer. It's just you're going to associate with different numbers in the problem to help make uh, multiplying easier so you can do it a little faster. Okay, let's test the method and see if it works. With a number other than 54, 42 is 6 times. Let's use the associate property and see to see if 2 and 3 are also factors of 42. How will we rewrite 6? Go ahead and rewrite 6. Don't forget the parentheses. Two times 3 is another way to rewrite 6. Okay. Let's now move the parentheses to first multiply 3 times 7 rather than 2. Because we already know that 2 times 3 is 6. So let's move the parentheses. We're going to say 3 times 7. You always multiply the parentheses first. So 3 times 7 equals 21. Find the product of 2 and 21. Is it true that 2 times 21 equals 42? Well, at this point, can you just add them together? 21 plus 21 equals 42. So what is that method called? You take the parentheses and you move them so that you're with a new number. So you have one number with another new number. And you're multiplying those together instead. Okay, it's called the associative property. use the associative property to prove that since 6 is a factor of 60, both 2 and 3 are also factors. So go ahead and fill in the blanks 
and see if 2 and 3 are also factors of 60. We know they are. Now you're going to prove it. So pause and prove. Okay, we'll go back to that. So we have 6 times 10. That's how your work should look. We have, whoop, that makes up 6. 3 and 2, because remember those are the two factors we're trying to figure out anyways. 10 stays there. We're going to put uh, 2 here, and we'll do the big number with the 10. So, is 30 times 2 60? Yes, it is. So, 2 and 3 are also factors of 60. So are 6 and 10. Okay. Multiply 6 times 12. The answer is... Go ahead and solve and see what you get. Okay, so we start with uh, 72 because 6 times 12 is 72. Prove that 6 is a factor of 72. 2 and 3 are also factors using division or the associative property. So you can divide 72 by 2 and 3, or you can use the associative property. Now, if you use my little trick, 72 ends with a 2. That means 2 goes into it. 7 plus 2 is 9. Does 3 go into 9? Yes, 3 goes into 9, so 3 goes into 72. We're also kind of figuring out by this whole lesson that if 6 goes into a number, then 3 and 2 also go into it. If both 2 and 3 go into a number, then 6 also goes into it. Okay. Let's think about this for a minute. Any number that has 6 as a factor also has 2 and 3 as factors. Okay, explain your thinking or use division to answer the following. Is 2 a factor of 84? What's it end with? It ends with a 4. Does 2 go into 4? Yes, it does. So, yes. 84 ends with an even number. Okay, is 3 a factor of 84? What's 8 plus 4? 8 plus 4 is 12. Does 3 go into 12? Yes. So, yes. 8 plus 4 equals 12. And 3 goes into 12. So, Three goes into eighty-four. So two goes into eighty-four. Three goes into eighty-four. So does six go into eighty-four? Remember, if two, both two and three go into a number, then six goes into that number as well. Okay, use an associative property to find more factors of 24 and 36. So what times 3 equals 12? 4. Okay, go ahead and do the other one. 
In class, we use the associative property to show that when 6 is a factor, then 2 and 3 are factors because 6 equals 2 times 3. We use the fact that 8 equals 4 times 2 to show that 2 and 4 are factors of 56, 72, and 80. So, the goal was to show 4 times 2. So when you solve this, you're going to do the associative property 4 times 2 to replace your 8 times 7. Okay? Now, go ahead and work to solve each of these problems. Remember, you're going to replace all of the 8s with 4 times 2. Okay? And that is it. A wrap.